recording in progress. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I'm Pastor Rufus, and I have here with me Sister Joanna. And Sister Joanna will be blessing us with a song today. Uh, I heard her warming up this morning, and so I'm sure she'll deliver. And uh, we pray for a song, for the Lord to put a song on, on her heart. And, and I believe that he did. And so, but before we go to her, let's go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the privilege of delivering this Sabbath message and the song by Sister Joanna. And we pray that you'll just be with us, Lord, and you'll give us the words to speak. So everything, that everything will be from you. And just get me out of the way. And Sister Joanna, I'm sure she desires the same thing. And just put our words, put your words into our hearts and into our mouths. And bless those who are hearing. Put your spirit upon the ears of the listener. And cause them to hear what you have for them what you have for their specific lives and their what's in what's going on in their lives and which only you know, at least among those of us here. And we pray that you'll be with us all and just help us to do everything according to your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our sister Joanna. As we uh, went over this this morning and the message Oh, it's so clear. And God led me right to this song because it, 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 it seems to correlate. So I just pray that the Lord will help me to get out of the way and to just uh, prepare our hearts for the message. <clears throat> Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me bring your love. Where there's injury, your oh, pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in me. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there's darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It isn't pardoning that we are pardoned. It's in giving to all men that we receive. And in dying that we're born to eternal life. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see. To be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make us a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let us bring home. Where there's darkness, only light, and where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that we may never see so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love with all our souls. Make us a channel of your peace. Where there's 
whose despairing light let us bring home. Where there's darkness, Lord, let us bring your light and where sadness ever joy. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Thank you, Sister Joanna. Thank you. And now, <clears throat> for our good news message today, entitled, Sermon on the Mount Continues. And we'll begin with the introduction. And here it is. In the previous messages, we covered the genealogy of Jesus, his baptism by John the Baptist, and Satan's temptation of him after he had fasted for 40 days. Notice Satan's timeliness there. He knew that the Lord had fasted, and that is when he went after him, when he believed he was in his weakest, weakest state. And, and actually, he asked, asked him about food. And so how cunning is Satan, that tempter? Mm -hmm. After having dismissed the tempter and John the Baptist taken into custody, custody, Jesus withdrew into Galilee, where his revelations of himself would begin. His first act was to call his disciples. After calling 12, who readily followed him, he began his ministry in Galilee. There he went about teaching in the synagogues and healing and, and healing many diseases among the people. A great multitude was following him. He went up upon a mountain and his disciples sat before him. Then he began to teach what conceivably was the most profound message in the scriptures, the Sermon on the Mount. Our message today will complete the discussion of this most amazing passage, which began last week. Yeah. Amen. Actually, our brothers and sisters, it began two weeks ago. Um, and But now we'll go to arms and prayers, and Sister Joanna will take care of that. Matthew 6, verses 1 through 15. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not, left your, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving will be in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when, but you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanna. Now note in that passage is, Jesus covered one of two of the primary things that we do as Christians, things that we feel compelled to do. One is given, given, given on, so to speak, according to the words of the Bible, and praying. That is something that we believe God desires for us to do that will bless us. And now we'll go to some supporting scripture. We'll begin with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. And Mark 11, verse 25. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive your transgressions. Ecclesiastics uh, chapter 5, verse 2. Do not be hasty in word or impulsive in thought to bring up a matter in the presence of God. For God is in heaven and you are on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. And now, fasten, true treasure, and mammon. Sister Joanna. Matthew 6, verses 16 to 34. Whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance so that they will be noticed by men when they are fasting. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And wealth is another word for the word mammon, which was given in the title. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? <laughs> Look at the birds of the air that they, they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you by being worried can add a single hour to his life. And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? 
For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. Now, note uh, earlier in that passage, it spoke about <clears throat> those who are, are fasting. And they're fasting as if they're fasting before men, for the, that men might see them say, oh, that person is fasting. He, he must be a good Christian, or, or whatever they may think or say. Well, we know these people are doing that. They're, they're neglecting how they look so they can be seen as fasting and they'll know that their their friends or others will know that they're fasting but the scripture goes on to say they have received their reward that's why they were doing it they were doing it as of before men and that's how they got noticed as of before men but not god and mm -hmm. so the point is that we have to do things unto god not unto men Amen. and that's that was a depth in the depth of that whole reading there that was one of the, the deepest things that came out for us to just to know and to realize. Uh, supporting okay. scriptures. Make you click to. Okay. Oh. Go back. Okay. <laughs> Second Chronicles 9 verses 4 through 6. Okay. <clears throat> the food at his table, the feeding of his servants, the attendance of his ministers, and their attire, his cupbearers and their attire, and his stairway by which he went up to the house of the Lord. She was breathless. Then she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. Nevertheless, I did not believe their reports until I came and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. You, you surpassed the report that I heard. Now, about King Solomon. now we know, <laughs> yes, you can tell that uh, this person, this lady, is a female, was speaking about Solomon and his wisdom. And what she was indicating that his wisdom is far greater than what she was told and what she expected. Okay. Judging others? Sister John. Matthew 7, verses 1 through 6. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, mm -hmm. first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sister Jill. And now for support in scripture, uh, verse one, first Samuel 15, verse 33. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed uh, Agar to pieces before the Lord at Gilgal. Proverbs 23, verse 9. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Isaiah 33, verse 1. Woe to you, O destroyer, while you were not destroyed, and he who is treacherous, while others did not deal treacherous with him. As soon as you finish destroying, you will be destroyed. 
As soon as you cease to deal treach treacherously, others will deal treacherously with you. Romans 2 verse 1. Therefore, you have no excuse. Every one of you who passes judgment, for in that which you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. Encouragement to pray, ways, fruits. Matthew 7, 7 through 23. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened. For what man is there among you who when his son asks for a loaf will give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? In everything, therefore, Treat people the same way you want to, them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Amen. And some support in scripture. We'll begin with uh, Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Jeremiah 34, verse 17. Therefore, thus says, says the Lord, you have not obeyed me in proclaiming release each man to his brother and each man to his neighbor. Behold, I am proclaiming a release to you, declares the Lord, through the sword, through the pestilence, and to the famine, and I will make you a terror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Luke 11, verse 10. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Amen. The two foundations, Matthew 7, 24 to 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine 
and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Amen. And now, supporting scriptures on what was just read. Uh, in our first passage comes from Proverbs 10, verse 25. When the whirlwind passes, <clears throat> the wicked is no more but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Start to clean it off. So, Proverbs uh, 12, verse seven. The wicked are overthrown, but the house of the righteous will stand. And, wow, that brings us to the conclusion. And our first passage will be from Matthew 6, verse 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your father who is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 7. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose they will be heard for their many words. Matthew 6, verse 12. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. Whom, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood, and has not sworn, sworn deceitfully. 1 Peter 3, verse 14. But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed, and do not fear their intimidation, and do not be troubled. Amen. Did you do that? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Oh, Heaven, Heavenly Father, uh, may the Lord bless you and. Okay. Father, we thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you for, for all that you are doing. We thank you for getting us through this message and just guiding Joanna and I and, and helping us to, to present this uh, very important message for those listening. Uh, the Sermon of the Mount, one of the great uh, prayers, great uh, uh, revelations from our Lord and Savior, in the entire Bible, in, in my opinion. And Lord, we just thank you for making this a part of this presentation today. And I'm sure that those who are listening are blessed from these words that they may embed them in their hearts and just be led by everything that was said and, and proclaimed today in this message. And we just thank you for all the things that you, you've given us we thank you for this Sabbath day, Lord, and, and your day of rest, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity to uh, present your word and to, to uh, promote your word in, in this world. And we give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord uh, put his confidence upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah.